returning to the speech that the Lubavitcher Rebbe made in 1989. <clears throat> and it came out exactly in the same uh, combination as this year, almost the same date. The date is a little bit different. But the same, the Torah portion they're reading, which was Shemini, and it was the, the Shabbat before the first day of Nisan. So therefore we read Parshat HaChodesh, which talks about God giving the first commandment <coughs> to the Jews that he gave to all the Jewish people, which was sanctifying the month. <coughs> sanctifying the month. And in which month is it? The month of Nisan. So the Rebbe is explaining all these three things together. But up to now, the Rebbe is explaining a very interesting thing, and that is birthday. That according to Rebbe Yeshua, the world began, God began to create the world on the 25th day of Adar, which that's going to be what, I guess, tomorrow, right? Tomorrow, the next day, two, two days. <clears throat> Adar. So we explained that for the last two days, we've been explaining that. But in any case, According to Judaism, God did create the world, and God created the world 5,784 years ago, exactly. And before that, there was absolutely nothing, just in, incomprehensible godliness. And God created the world, and God's creating the world every moment right now. Huh? He's creating the whole business right now, constantly, <clears throat> every single instant. But when did he begin this whole process of creation was on the 25th day of Adar. Adar. That was when God began in thought to create the world. And indeed, God began to create the world six months later, which is the 25th day of Elul. And he actually created, he finished the creation <clears throat> when he created man. That was the, the, the crown of creation, the fina finale of creation was when he created man. That was the first day of <clears throat> Tishrei. That's Rosh Hashanah. That's Jewish Rosh Hashanah. That's Jewish New Year's. But when did he create man in thought? When did he finish the creation in thought? That's the first day of Nisan. That's according to Rabbi Yoshua, we said. <clears throat> but it comes out that the Rebbe explains it, that there's no argument. That Rabbi Yoshua just pointed this out. Okay. <clears throat> so the Rebbe said that's the whole idea oh, that we did this, we did this, we did this one minute, one minute here we go we did this <clears throat> okay let me just let me just pause this one minute let me see if I can do this <clears throat> so when did God begin to create the world in thought? On the 25th day of Adar, this month. It's going to be in two days. We're going to. That was the birthday of the world in thought, but that was the beginning in God's thought. So that was really the beginning. It says, why did God create the world? Why did God create the world? So it says one of the reasons, there's a lot of midrashim, but it says one of the reasons is, God created the world for the sake of the Jews. What does it mean for the sake of the Jews that we should benefit, everybody should serve us? No. For the Jews to fix it up. Olova Machshava, that's when it rose up in God's thought. Shorsham, this is the inside of godliness. Lamaila, above all the worlds, above speech, God started creating the world in thought. So the Jewish people rose up in God's thought. That's the source from the level of the external aspect of God. And by means of the service of the Jewish people in Torah and the commandments, and as God's creating the world, is so to speak, God coming out of himself, so to speak. As by means of the Jewish people doing Torah and the commandments, we draw down and we reveal in the world godliness, which is above any limitation. And by means of this is completed the intention why God created the world. So in simple language, God created the world so the Jewish people would do commandments. When the Jewish people do commandments, that benefits the whole world. <clears throat> and commandments, of course, are only physical things. 
Ubapratios Yoter, and even more detail, Hachiluk, the difference between the novelty of Kaf He Adar, the 25th day of Adar, when God began to create the world in thought, <clears throat> to the novelty of Parshat Achodesh, which is the first day of Nisan, when God finished creating the world in thought. So the, uh, the first day of Nisan, which is six days after, five days after the 25th day of Adar, 25th day of Adar, God began to create the world in thought. And six days later, on the first day of Nisan, God began to create man in thought. That was the finishing of the world in thought. This is the novelty of Chafei Adar, the whole novelty of the 25th day of Adar, which is the beginning of God's deeds in the world is for the sake of creating man, who be'ikr mainly benogei lapulis Yisrael, mainly what the Jewish people do in the world. So again, the Jewish people are the chosen people. What do you mean they're chosen? Just like God chose, he created all the animals, and then he created man, and the reason he created man was to elevate the world, to make the world a perfect place. <clears throat> and, and man didn't do it. So God chose, when Abraham came along, God said, oh, this is what I meant. This is, this is what I meant when I created the world. Somebody that had no thought about himself whatsoever. Whatsoever. <clears throat> I guarantee you, if you if you take any other religion in the world, I mean, I think, you know, and you would make it into a failure, kick, the, the, kick all the people out of their land, get rid of their leaders, scatter them all over the place, right? Then that's it. It would last, you know, 10 years, 15 years. <clears throat> You're the Jewish people. The temple has been destroyed. The Jewish people have been scattered all over the world. Everybody hates us. We see it in the world. Nobody knows why they hate us. They make up all these weird reasons why. You know, nowadays the reasons that they make up are even worse than the reasons that the, the Nazis made up. At least they said they, they're something, they're ruining our country. Now it's just, just they hate Jews for the sake of Jews. The, everybody hates us. And nevertheless, we hold on to our Judaism. 2,000 years we're holding on to our Judaism. The first people that got the idea, let's make a new Judaism. We'll get rid of it. We're the Zionists. They said, we're going to make a new Judaism. We'll just be a nation. No, nobody's going to hate us. Now they have two reasons to hate us. And nevertheless, we hold on to our Judaism. And even the most anti-God, anti whatever, atheistic Zionists, they're still proud of their Judy. I'm a Jew, just as good a Jew as you are. I'm a Jew, right? Th that point of being a Jew is there eternally. It can't, it can't. And just, that's the whole reason what it means God chose the Jews. A Jew deep, deep inside knows that there's God. He knows there's a plan for creation. He knows that everything in the creation is very valuable to God. Nothing is dispensable. Every Jew knows it. Deep, 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 deep down inside. And the, 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 the Jews are here to inspire the whole world to this fact. It will be created, that's all. That's the whole idea why God created the world for the sake of the Jews, for this little point of truth that's found in the world. And even though the world hates it, the world can't stand it. And the Jews themselves can't stand it, but it's true. And, and that's the, the secret of health to the whole world. It's like you tell a, a, a person who's addicted to something to stop doing it, he'll kill you. He'll kill you. you know, stop, stop playing those uh, the video games. Stop it. Get away from me. Right, right, right. You, know the, you know that you're addicted to, uh, to, to X, Y. So who are you to tell me? I'm a, a person has to realize himself and come to himself, his own conclusions, then it's very difficult. It's very difficult to change nature. And that's what the Jewish people are here for. And therefore, people don't like them. <clears throat> that's the purpose of the Jews. That's the whole novelty. So God created the world in all these, what's what I want to call it, four stages. Number one, he began to create the world in thought. Then he finished creating the world in thought. That's what happened in Utter. Then he began to create the world in real, real, in reality, that's in Elul. And he finished creating the world in reality, that's Rosh Hashanah. That's the whole idea of Parshas Achodesh, the first day of Nisan, when God finished creating the world in thought. The first day of Nisan, that's the, when man was created in God's thought. Who is man in this case? Is the Jewish people. That's relevant to the, we, Jews. 
we have a terrible, tremendous responsibility to educate the world. And even though they hate us, our job is not to defeat them, is not to run away from them, and not, certainly not to join them. But the, our job is supposed to be to educate the world. The Tachlet HaShlem is the complete purpose of the world, is Chibur joining these two things together. The 25th day of Adar, when God began to create the world in thought, and Parshat HaChodesh, when God finished creating the world in thought together. That that's the whole novelty of the Jewish people should be drawn and revealed in the world. Yeshlo, see if we can add on Sha'in Yan said that this joining these two topics is stressed even more on the 25th day of Udder when it falls on Shabbat. That's how it was back then when the Rebbe was speaking. He made the speech. And the, the Shabbat was Parshat Chodesh. When we read about the first commandment, the Jews got on Rosh Chodesh Nisan. Shabo Kuyam, the Koran, and we read Parshat Shemini. We have Yom Shemini. That's this week's Torah portion, eight. That's the first day. And the Yom Shemini was the first day of Nisan. That's how it was, the first day of Nisan. Shabo, the Natal Asara Torah, that it took 10 crowns from the first day of the creation of the world. Tachlis, the whole purpose of these 10 crowns. <clears throat> for the beginning of the months. Okay, let me just explain what's going on over here. The Jews got out of Egypt. God gave them the commandment that they, they worshiped the golden calf. <clears throat> Moses went up three times. He got forgiveness. He got the second tablets. After he got the second tablets, that was in Yom, Yom Kippur. And then God gave them the commandment to make the holy temple, to make the tabernacle. <clears throat> and they prepared and they gathered and they did this. And finally, the tabernacle was... <clears throat> <clears throat> was open for business on the first day of Nisan, six months later, five and a half months later, whatever. That's when it was open. So the, the, the tabernacle began service on the first day of Nisan, almost one year after the Jews got out of Egypt. 15 days short, the Jews got out of Egypt on the 15th day of Nisan. And one year later, 15th day, 15 days short of the first anniversary of their leaving Egypt, that's when they built the tabernacle, uh, the tabernacle, the portable temple, doubled it. Before they built the tabernacle, there were seven days of preparation. Moses would stand it up and take it down, stand it up and take it down, seven days. And on the eighth day, he stood the, the tabernacle up and it remained there permanently. That's what how this week's Torah portion begins, the eighth day. And on that day, it said there were 10 crowns given to the world that God revealed his presence in the world and the other 10 other good things happened. And it also happens to be that a terrible thing happened that none of an view, the sons of Aaron rushed in uh, uninvited to the Holy Temple. They couldn't hold themselves back from the holiness and they died. But except for that, it was a, a very special day. Here the Rebbe doesn't talk about that. So, that, so this, the first day of Nisan, which that's going to be in, in the next week, <clears throat> but when the Rebbe was speaking, it was, in, it was the, the week after on Thursday. By us, it's the next week on Tuesday. It's going to be. Shabazem Mudgas has stressed that the first day of the month, of the months, and the first day of the creation of the world are unified together. By the Jewish people, the first day of the month, of the months, the first month of the year is Nisan. That's the month the Jewish people got out of Egypt. The first day of the year is six days later on Rosh Hashanah. God finished creating the physical world. So here, now they're unified together because we're saying the first day of Nisan, that's when God finished creating the world in thought. That's the level of godliness which is above any limitation in God's thought. It should be drawn down into the physical world because that's when God created the physical world in thought. So it unifies the God's thought with God's action. Okay, they, in order that the Jewish people should draw down and bring about this big novelty. <coughs> Excuse me. <coughs> <coughs> That's mentioned in our Torah portion, that this month is given to you and draw this down Jewish. <coughs> What's interesting to the Jews should be drawn down and being interested to the whole world, my sabreshis, 
there has to be somehow or other, the Jewish people have to embody this in their service of God. How do we unite the purpose of the Jewish people with the purpose of the world? <clears throat> or in simple language, the creator with the creation. How do we do it? <clears throat> so it says, in some way, it's all rolled together on the first day of Nisan. The first day of Nisan, it's the beginning of the Jewish months, but it's also the beginning of the creation of the, 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 of the world, of man, in thought. When man was created in thought, that's the first day of Nisan. So both these two are together. We have to do something in order to make this visible to the whole world. What do we do? And the, novice, the novelty between the 25th day of Adar and the novelty of, of the, the first day of Nisan simply means that the 25th day of Adar, when God began to create the world in thought, <clears throat> Who this is Yom a day she yesh bo chiddush miuchad is a special special how do you say novelty in regarding to all the rest of the days of the week. Shari because behold become eh. <clears throat> become many many days the twenty fifth day of Adar is in the weekdays like this year like it is by us. But when the Rebbe was speaking, the 25th day of Adar fell on Shabbat. And, and okay, usually Kafhe of Adar falls on a weekday, like it does by us. And Parshat Chodesh, which they read in Shabbos, this is a special thing which reveals, which is read only on Shabbat. <clears throat> only on Shabbat. Okay. In the year that the Rebbe was speaking, it, they both coincided, the 25th day of utter, which was when God began to create the world in thought, <clears throat> was read on Shabbat, on Parsha Chodesh. So the unification, okay. The difference between them in serving in the service of man. The novelty of the 25th day of Adar <clears throat> is regarding the world. God, it rose up in God's thought to create the world. It was the beginning of the creation of the world in God's thought. 25th day of Adar. This is relevant to the service of a Jew in weekday things. <clears throat> you have a job, you have a house, you have a wife, you have a children, you have a car. You live in a country, there's laws, there's, you have to pay taxes, etc. Day-to-day regular things. The ilu, but achirush, the novelty of the of Parshat Achodesh that we read, the Shabbat, this is relevant to the Jews, how they are holy. That's Shabbat. Shabbat is a holy thing. Only Jews are supposed to keep Shabbat, by the way. It says a non-Jew is not allowed to keep Shabbat. Huh? Non-Jews are not allowed to keep Shabbat. They're not allowed to make up, uh, because Shabbat is only for the Jews. If a non-Jew keeps Shabbat, he gets the whole thing wrong. He messes the whole creation up. Because a non-Jew keeping Shabbat is, is totally different. The whole idea of what a non-Jew is in relation to God is totally different from a Jew. By a non-Jew, God is something really, really far away. By a Jew, God is infinitely further away than the non-Jews can say, but God is and is not limited to being far away. God is incredibly close, and the novelty of the Jews is that God being close is a higher aspect of God than God being far away. That's the thing of Shabbat. Shabbat shows that this world is tremendously, infinitely more important to God than all of the upper worlds, Shabbat. This physical world shines godliness. That's especially for the Jewish people. This world shines godliness. Therefore, the non-Jews are not supposed to keep Shabbat. By a non-Jew, Shabbat is a day that's you know not a, nothing to do with the world. And by Jews, the whole essence of Shabbat is the world, that the world shines godliness. We don't have to do anything. The nimsa, therefore, shebechlalas, nimsa, so comes out, shebechlalas, so that the whole service of the Jewish people has to be in a way of being new, <clears throat> being brand new every moment. God is creating the physical world brand new. He's creating the spiritual world brand new. That's the message of Shabbat. That's the message of Kaf Hei Adar. Achirush, the novelty is, and <clears throat> the, the Jewish people serving God in the weekdays. 
how you act when you're in your job, in your store, how you deal with people. Also in the service and holiness. And not only that, Ella shed the novelty in, in <coughs> how Jews serve God in holy things. Like it says, this month is yours. That's the idea that God picked out, single out the Jewish people. It has to permeate also in the weekday, in the novelty of God creating the weekday, the, the 25th day of Adar. God creating the weekday, the beginning of Misa Bereshit. So unifying these two things together, that's the job of the Jews. And that we especially see <clears throat> on this Shabbat, which is Parshat HaChodesh, which that's God picked the Jews. But it's also in two days, there's going to be the 25th day of Adar, when God began and thought to create the world. There are many, many levels, but practice in, in, in more detail. There's many, many levels in the difference between weekday and holiness in the service of man. <clears throat> Which, by the way, that's the essence of Judaism is to divide between holy and not holy. And so it means God chose the Jews. He chose Shabbos. He chose, he chose, he made this type of food is kosher. This is not kosher. And to separate the Jews from the rest of the world because the Jews have a unique job in the world to show that the world is holy. <clears throat> to show that the world is holy. And anything that indicates otherwise, you have to try to keep away from That's the idea of separation. Okay, so let's see, how, would, how do we do this? First of all, there's the general difference between the weekdays and Shabbat. In the weekdays, Osek Yehudi, a Jew, occupies himself in physical things. And the Hebrew Yeshus, Maisecha, your work, your deeds, but open in such a way that all of your deeds should be for the sake of heaven. <clears throat> everything you do should be the sake of heaven. In the weekdays, just by the way, I wanted to say something. The essence of man is responsibility. The essence of man is responsibility. We're created in this world to do something. <clears throat> Everyone. <clears throat> Even if it's not, not to get mad, not to have desires, not to leave your wife, not to cheat somebody, not to steal money, to help other people. The smallest things are important, tremendously important to God. Everything. But a Jew is an additional thing. A Jew has a job to make the world not just holy, and not just, not, no, I'm sorry, to make the world not just ordered, blessed, and healthy, but to make the world holy. That's the job of the Jews. The non Jews, they have to work in the world to make the world. Therefore, according to some opinions, it's forbidden for a non Jew even to take a day of rest. Unless maybe it could be that if the day of rest helps you to work better in the other days, it could be. But the idea of a non-Jew, he always has to be aware of his responsibility to improve the world. Whether it's by appreciating the world, by loving someone, whether it's by changing himself, his attitude, whether it's by making something, doing something, but he always has to be involved in the world. Right? The Jews, though, that's the six days of work. They have to be involved in the world. The, se the, the seventh day, Shabbat, a Jew has to fulfill his responsibility to remind the world that God is creating them, to remind the world that God is, loves them. And that you have to do by connecting to God. That's Shabbat. Shabbat is a pure creator day, given only to the creator. <clears throat> but to remind us that we have an obligation to put the creator into the, every detail of the world, that's only the Jews. The non-Jews don't have this. That's called making the world holy. And the non-Jews don't have that obligation. Their job is to make the world orderly, to make the world blessed, to make the world healthy, happy, meaningful. But Jews, their job is to make the world holy, and that's the idea of Shabbat. Okay, so all the rest of the days of the week, a Jew also has to be thinking about the Creator. In all of your ways, you have to know Him. Or less than that, a little bit less, all of the deeds you have to do are for the sake of heaven. 
And there's, there's me and there's heaven. Or there's another way for all, everything I do, I know God. I'm connected to God and everything. But on the Shabbat, by the Jews on Shabbat, you don't have to do anything. Call is good. All of you do is just holiness. Torah, tefillah, prayer. Similarly, also in the weekdays itself, that what you do in the weekday in your job, in your regular physical job, one second, In Torah and in prayer, is <clears throat> that's the okay. In the weekdays, also, when you learn Torah and when you pray in the weekdays, then you're putting a little bit of Shabbat into the weekdays. But and in prayer itself, the first three blessings of the 19 blessings we bless every day, three times a day, the Jewish people pray what they call the Shemona Esrei. There was an extra prayer added on, a 19th prayer against the church. That was added on. That was, you know, almost 2,000 years ago. <clears throat> the three beginning and the three last blessings, they you're praising God. And the first three blessings of the first last blessing, these are the this is also Shabbat in the prayers. Right? When when every day we pray 19 blessings on Shabbat and on holidays, we only pray six. All the blessings in the middle are asking for our needs, and we don't ask for our needs on Shabbat, but we do praise God. That's the first three blessings and the last three blessings. And the 12 blessings which are in the middle, they're requesting our needs. This is only weak. That's the weak part, the, the weekly, how do you say, the, the mundane part of our prayers. So every day when we pray, the first three blessings in Shemona Esra and the last three, that's the Shabbat which is in our prayers every day. Similarly, on Shabbat itself, the whole idea of serving God constantly, that there is in the weekdays, just like in prayer, there's the first three prayers and the last three prayers. <clears throat> the things that you do on the, the, the weekday, you eat meals, you, you, you talk to your family, but there's special things you do on Shabbat. This is the Shabbat of the Shabbat. So on, on, on Shabbat, you don't go up on a mountain as you said, on Shabbat, you go to Shul, you pray, but the Shul you go every week, every day of the week. So that's like the weak part, the, the mundane part of Shabbat. You go home, you have a home, you don't go, uh, like I say, in, in a cave on Shabbat and live in a, no, you go to your house, that's the mundane part of Shabbat. <clears throat> so you have to put Shabbat into the weekdays. That's mostly in your prayers. And you have to put the weekdays into Shabbat. That's in the mundane things you do. Your house, your walking, your clothes. And even more. Shagam, also the thing of Torah and the commandments itself. <clears throat> there is a chiluk, the difference between weekday, mundane, and holy. A commandment. A commandment contains in it something mundane, regular. <clears throat> and something holy. What is it? Regarding to doing the commandment, we find in the words of the rabbis, it says, Lo need no mitzvah de Allah tzarev bahem at <clears throat> There's a lot of explanations of what is the effect of the commandments. One main effect is you're just doing the will of God. doesn't make any difference if you lose everything. You're doing God's will. Even if everybody laughs at you when you're there, and it costs you money and, and it's a big trouble and it's very difficult Right, you have to find to fill in, and you have to put them on. Nevertheless, you do it. You do what God wants. That's one explanation. Another explanation is that you bring blessing into the world. It has an effect that makes the world more blessed, more holy. Right, we talked about that before. But another thing is, is that the commandments refine us. God wanted to bring merit, a refinement to the Jewish people. Therefore, He gave them a lot of commandments. <coughs> When you do a commandment, so you're using your bodily energy and you're using your time and your thought and you're to, to do it exactly what God wants. So that sort of puts, puts your arms and your legs through this sort of car wash of holiness temporarily. It sort of washes off your egotism from these. So you get a benefit. You get a benefit. That's another. Hasbara, the explanation is, should be in, you know, this is the, the commandments. There are a lot of different levels of a, what happens when you do a commandment? 
regarding to the lowest aspect of the commandments, it says, Lo nitna mitzvahs, the commandments, but the highest aspect of the commandments is, I'm doing what God wants. I'm connecting to God. I'm doing what God wants. I'm not living on my terms. I'm not expecting anything in return. I'm doing what God wants. Completely incomprehensible that I can do such a thing, but I'm doing it. What am I going to get? I'm going to get. What I'm going to get is what I'm doing. I'm doing what God wants. That's the biggest reward of all. That's the highest aspect. To give yourself, that's called Mesirut Nefesh, giving yourself. The lowest aspect of the commandments is I get a benefit. What? <clears throat> the commandments were given only to refine in them the creations. Letzarif, to refine. This is Mitzarif Azov, like to refine gold. You take out the dross. I know the Verera told to take out the good and to separate it from the bad, like Abira Sigin from the Zav. You take out the bad, like you take out the, the dross and the sediments from gold. Uh, I understand that's what carrots. I never really looked this up. I wanted to look at it. I understand that's the difference between it's a 20 carat diamond and a 50 carat diamond, whatever it is. Carrots is how pure it is, how they refined it. Is that true? I don't know if it's true, but in any case, the, the, the gold has to be refined. Silver is refined. They take out the dross from this. That's what it means, let's sarif. When we put, when you do the commandments, that refines us. It takes out our egotism. It takes out our false misconceptions about ourselves and about life. <clears throat> Even by those people that they are on level of briot, to serve the briot, the creations. And there's, there's some people that the only thing good about them, you can say, is that God created them. Only God would create a thing like that, right? Only God could create. And that these people are the lowest of the lows. When they do a commandment that refines them, that's the lowest aspect of the creators. What's the highest aspect of the creators? Creation of the of the, of the commandments. I'm sorry, what is the highest? Regarding the highest aspect of the commandments, it says, Israel. God wants to give merit to the Jewish people. Therefore, he gave them commandments. The zakot, what does it mean? Ends the Bishfield, not in order to take out the bad, but in order just to increase more good, like Zach and Bahir, to increase more light. Looking therefore, Nikrim Khan, therefore, the Jews of Jewish people are called Yisrael, not the Briot, not just creations. They're called Yisrael. <clears throat> that Allah has how much more so Briot Ba'alma. This is a higher level than any other aspect of Jews. How much more so it's higher than just being a creation? The Indian said this is made by means of by means of the many commandments that God gave us. We're gonna have to stop here soon. Okay, so that's what the commandments do is to refine us. But this idea of refining the Jewish people, the merit to the Jewish people. This is also, also there is in this a certain degree of refinement. L'zachod milashen zichuch, to be refined, to be clear. Even though this is not in a way of removing the bad, but in a way of making the Jewish people shine more by means of the commandments. Why is the Rebbe talking about this? He's talking about bringing Shabbat into the weekday. He's talking about how to make the physical world holy, like Shabbat is holy. There, and that's the, the there's a higher level in the commandments, and that is that the commandments are a light. Mitzvahs are called like a lamp, and the Torah is called the light from the lamp. Namely, that when a Jew does a commandment, it reveals godliness, the upper will of God, not for any purpose, not in order to refine the Jews, or even to give merit to the Jews, but just to reveal godliness in the world. That's the reason God created the world. So this level that God gave the commandments just to refine people and take away the bad, which is the lowest aspect of the commandments. This is the weak part, weekday part of the commandments. But the essence of the commandments that it puts light <coughs> in the world, it's like a, a holy temple. It's a place where you take the physical world and use it to serve God. This is a godliness which is like Shabbat of the commandments. As we're going to talk about more, God willing, Tomorrow, we're almost up to this. We are this. And we have more to go. We're up to here. Good. Page 362. All right. We'll do this tomorrow. Let us now do the Yom Yom.
One second. Yeah, yeah. Oh, whew. 